for Wentworth. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. When this legislation was first introduced, I think many stakeholders breathed a huge sigh of relief. The government's consultation for country-by-country country reporting and changes to the thin capitalisation rules have caused significant concern for the impact they would have on entirely legitimate business activities. But the government accepted, to its credit, feedback from stakeholders and made sweeping, sweeping changes to its proposal to be both workable but also met, address the integrity issues that the government is legitimately pursuing. But that relief was short-lived. It has now become apparent that there are new rules that have been inserted, the deck deduction creation rules, after the consultation, rules that once again would have significant impact on legitimate business activities. The rules would impact multinationals which loan money to a subsidiary in order to purchase assets from another subsidiary. The borrowing subsidiary is entitled to claim tax deduction with regard to the interest expense. Each element of this is routine. Conglomerates often provide loans to subsidiaries that is cheaper than external finance, and related parties often acquire assets from each other. The integrity concern is that the parent entity may set an excessively high interest rate on the loan and allow profits from Australian businesses to be siphoned offshore. This is a legitimate concern and one that I support the government's actions in terms of ensuring that we prevent this. And, and the debt deduction creation rules, or the DDCRs, are intended to deal with this con concern appropriately. It seems that the stakeholders I've spoken to are broadly, are broadly supportive of the integrity principle that the government is trying to pursue. However, they have serious concerns with how broadly these rules have been drafted. They're likely to capture legitimate business activities, denying a tax deduction for those activities, and thereby create an undue distortion in the market. These rules are likely to force some businesses to seek external financing when internal financing is available or to acquire assets from third parties when they are already available internally. They will also create an inconsistency when the same activity incurs, a different, tax, incurs different tax treatment for different business types. These changes, as far as I can tell, are not the intent of the legislation. They will increase the complexity and cost of certain business activities in Australia but serve no public benefit. There is no real justification I've seen for these changes, and from my conversations with stakeholders and their submissions to the Senate inquiry, it is clear that they are unworkable. I'm certain that the government understands the changes are unworkable and do not believe there is any chance of them passing into law in the present state. Given this, I'm not clear why the House is considering the bill. The legislation should be deferred until these concerns are resolved or discharged from the notice paper. I'd also like to share concerns with the consultation process. I think it's absolutely critical in this House that we engage with stakeholders to understand the impact of legislation that we have and will ha that, the, that legislation will have and ensure changes are well targeted with minimal unintended consequences. There were two rounds of consultation on this bill, and which is appropriate. However, I do find it concerning that the problematic parts of the bill, these ones that I'm talking on right now, were not consulted on. It is hardly surprising that problems emerge when policies are produced without the input on those in important parts from those who are affected. The government does sometimes do better in this and certainly can do better on this, and I think the government should, in this case of this particular bill, try again. Given all of this, I'm actually alarmed that the government is nevertheless asking the House to agree to this bill. When Labor were in opposition, they were extremely critical of how the coalition governed and promised Australians they would govern responsibly. I have to say that that is difficult to square with the claim on this bill. I also think that it is inappropriate for the government to try and pass legislation in this House which it surely knows is unworkable. Even if they are going to consult and, and defer consideration in the other place, I think the bill will then complete return to the House, completely transformed for once of us to consider once again. And I would like to ask the government to consider whether this process is best use of the government's time. Perhaps it would be better to defer consideration by the House until the government can consult with stakeholders and prepare amendments. This is the point of my second reading amendment, which I am moving now. It makes the point that businesses ought to have had the opportunity to provide feedback on the changes that affects them before the legislation being introduced and calls on the government to defer consideration until those concerns have been resolved. It also, also calls on the government to establish an independent tax reform commission. 
There is a serious problem with our tax policy making institutions when a government can propose three tax measures multinational reporting, thin capitalisation, and debt creation rules, each of them which are problematic. An independent commission could provide the government and the parliament on advice on how tax policy issues could be resolved based on expert advice and broad effective consultation. It could be based on the Australian Law Reform Commission, a Whitlam innovation that was built on by the Howard government and enjoys strong bipartisan support today. This would be a significant improvement to existing processes and would provide the community with more confidence in the proposals put before the parliament. It would be an important and valuable change to the policy making process and one that I encourage the, the government to consider. Today I'm also moving my consideration in detail amendments, which would simply remove the unworkable provisions from the bill. This would allow for the timely passage of the rest of the bill, while the government undertakes proper consultation and resolves concern with the debt creation rules. This would be a sensible way for the parliament to proceed with this legislation. I hope the government will recognise it is simply not appropriate to ask the House to support legislation which the government has no intention of implementing in its current form. And finally, I'd like to make a comment on tax reform more broadly. You know, this is a bill around tax reform, and I have been, I'm being very vocal in the House and externally in my support of tax reform. But I urge the government, when it is looking at these tax reforms, you know, to use um, an institute, to develop an institute such as the um, such as a, a tax reform commission, and to use that sort of tax reform commission to help develop detailed policies that would help improve the tax situation, the tax um, laws in this country. Because I believe that if we have that, that support for micro reforms and for sort of small scale technical but very important reforms, we will also help build the muscle for broader reforms for the tax system, which are absolutely critical for our ongoing prosperity, for the equity in our, in our communities um, and for you know, other important social and economic objectives such as housing and climate action. Thank you.